I'm calling this a monastery pretty intentionally. It wasn't just sexual. There was a lot of ritual associated with it. And basically, to produce the sort of children that they were interested in, they believed that um, different forms of black magic were necessary. And so um, there was a lot of careful planning around that. Um, and there was a lot of ritual involved, um, prayers and um, sacrifices and killings, all sorts of things going into this process, basically, so that I would conceive um, what they considered desirable children. So, and this, do you think that is a lot to do with your blood? I think a lot of it has to do with that. Yeah, they're very interested in bloodlines. Um, I mean, they're also just very interested in people who um, can survive. <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of other people, other boys, for instance, you know, I would just see them dying, you know, from, from just sheer exhaustion, from stress, from all kinds of things. Um, and, uh, but I, I was one of the ones who was just there year after year. Yeah. Well, I'm so, really sorry. Thanks. Mm. So you were taken to Mexico, obviously, and then, but you were still officially living in New York City? Officially, yeah. And then did you also go to school? And I did. I had many aspects of a normal life in my front life. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I'd be taken away from New York sometimes for weeks at a time um, during summer breaks, for instance, obviously, or maybe not obviously. But, um, but yeah, I'd be brought back to New York for a lot of the school year, and I, <laughs> I'd have a relatively normative experience um, in school during the winters. I, I was brought all over the world and different people were brought to me also because um, this breeding process is very intricate. It's very delicate. Um, they do a tremendous amount of genealogical research. <laughs> um, they have agents all over the globe who are looking for um, certain bloodlines, but also certain psychic characteristics, um, other kinds of, I don't I'm not privy to everything they're looking for, obviously. Um, but this is a very global program, and so I would sometimes, if, if it was deemed um, helpful to their plans, I'd be brought to other places, other countries, um, or they would bring in women and girls from, from outside the U.S. to me. And like, okay, so genealogically, you're, you're Jewish mostly? Mostly. Yeah, according to Ancestry.com, like 95% or 90-something percent Ashkenazi Jewish, yeah. And so, can you talk a bit, because it's just so specific, right? We're talking mm -hmm. about bloodlines. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a lot of people, that doesn't even mean anything at all. <laughs> like, who cares, yeah. usually? So can, yeah. we, can we just talk a little bit about that or what we sure. do know? Sure, sure. Um, well, uh... I'm no expert in this area, um, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I do have a lot of experience with people who are. <laughs> um, Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so uh, there are different schools of black magic. Um, this is my understanding so far. I, again, I'm not interested in black magic. I don't know a ton about it. Like, I haven't really researched it on my own, but, but for some purposes, um, uh, the Jewish bloodlines are considered essential to the process, basically. It's like you need a Jewish person to have the desired result of your spell. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure why that is. I'm not sure how much is superstition and how much is real. Um, but that was definitely the case. Um, in many cases, um, as I mentioned before this interview when, when we were talking, um, they, uh, they need specifically a descendant of Solomon. Um, so apparently I qualify for that. Um, I have enough of a direct blood relationship to the historical Solomon um, that they could use me for these rituals. 